competing against Wesley, the YouTube Golf Championships, Selena Golf Club, the Brian Bros Invitational. Today, we are speaking with George Bryan of Brian Bros Golf. We're gonna cover everything that you wanna know about what's going on in the life right now of George Bryan, just coming off the heels of a great 2v2 match with Grant Horvat playing against Josh Kelly and Fat Perez. We talk about thumbnail gate and much more. So sit back, relax, grab a hot cup of coffee. This is gonna be a great conversation. I'm Dougie, welcome to the Golf Clan your home for YouTube golf news, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Do it for George Bryan. We want to thank him for his time, for making time to chat about YouTube golf with the golf clan. So give this video a thumbs up. Make sure to hit the red subscribe button and turn it gray if you are not yet subscribed. Let's go ahead and bring in George Bryan. All right. I want to welcome a special guest to the channel, George Bryan. How are you doing today? Doing great. Thanks for, uh, thanks for having me on here. Yeah, I appreciate you taking some time. I wanted to start off with maybe a personal note before we get into the golf and YouTube. My wife and I are expecting our first in about four months, so I just wanted to ask you for any kind of tips. Um, I know you became a father not too long ago, so how's that going and any advice for me? Um, yeah, that's the best thing ever. So Andy is uh, two and three months, two and four months. Uh, so yeah, so it's been a wild ride. It's uh the first first few months are trying on all fronts. Uh, emotionally, physically, you just you just get this crazy thing plopped in your lap. And you have no idea what you're doing, but things kind of you start getting the feel for things, and it becomes more normal. Then once like I don't know, they turn three, four months old, they start smiling, kind of having some head, uh, being able to control their head a little bit, and all of a sudden you're like, wow, this is a human, and it, yeah, it just gets sweeter and sweeter. So, I mean, we're, what, two and a half, almost two and a half years into it. It's just like every uh, step, it keeps getting better and better. Um, so, yeah, it really is amazing. Very difficult at first, and it still gets harder. But, yeah, it's, uh, it's a wild, amazing ride. Yeah, have you figured out the whole parenting thing yet, or is it still a work in progress? No, it's, uh, you just kind of learn how to deal with things, and it just becomes normal. Like, craziness is part of the routine, and you just kind of have to accept it and uh, figure it out as you go. Speaking of uh, kids, what's it like having a son who's tall, goofy, and has a huge smile? Yep, uh, Grant, that's pretty uh, – I don't know how it all started. You know, I can't remember exactly what uh, what kind of kicked off, but it kind of just stuck. And, I mean, I think it's pretty funny, and, you know, I get a good kick when he refers to me, you know, his dad. And uh, But then, you know, we're at the Wyndham, and people are coming up to me and like, you know, hey, where's your son? I'm like, wow, so they, they think it's – you know, pretty funny as well. Um, but yeah, it's, it's wild how many people like kind of gravitated or, or uh, like took on to that because it was just kind of like something funny and light that we did. But then people, I guess, kind of thought it was humorous as well. But yeah, it's, 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 it's funny. The video that you guys played in the Pro-Am with your dad, it just, it was surprising how well he fit in and just kind of just slid in almost like a family member. So there's actually some part of it where it's like, wow, he actually, his vibe, his values, everything about it, his golf game, like he kind of stood in as a, as a Grant Bryan for a moment there. Uh, yeah, no, it, it really is. I mean, that's just kind of him. Like very, I mean, can get along with anyone, super nice, uh, just a golf nerd. And obviously me, my dad, Wesley, golfing family. So he just kind of naturally fit in uh, on that front. But then, you know, he's just one of the best guys out there, like really nice big smile and it's just hard not to get along with him and you know put him in any situation him gel but yeah it really was um fun getting us all together even my dad was like man you know this grant guy is this was a lot of it's a lot of fun get to see him do his thing and meet and um but yeah those videos did you know people really enjoyed i guess the four of us together we didn't really have any expectations we didn't know like hey what, i don't know how this pro M video is going to do but people really enjoyed you know seeing us together you know, oh, you know, obviously inside the ropes, you got to be kind of Wesley's, you know, dojo, if you will. But like the combination of the four of us, you know, the banter, the good golf, it was, I mean, it was a lot of fun to film and just be there and play. But then to see people enjoy it too it was really cool. So, did you ever learn that shot that your dad has when he's like 100 yards out and hits like a nine iron low spinning draw? Like, is that a shot that he taught you growing up or is that just his own thing? Tried. He tried to teach us, and it's just him. Like he's, his hands aren't as good as they used to be. But the one thing he does have, he has these low hook spin shots. That I mean, they 
like people watch him now they're like wow it's pretty impressive but like 15 like when he was still playing a little bit 15 years ago he could have like eight irons like hit these 90 yard shots with eight iron that had like spin and i'm like dad how did like how do you do this and it would i mean it's always been his kind of go-to he could hit any club you know he get a six iron seven iron and hit it from 150 all the way to 60 70 yards and really like be pretty precise and he always tried to hey son you gotta learn how to hit your eight iron more than just 160 yards um and i i've i can hit the hook part pretty easy i have that i mean seeing a hook's no problem but the low nine iron 100 yards that, that, that <laughs> checks up i don't i don't have it it got me it gets head high and it's <laughs> it's spinning <laughs> Yeah, no, those are fun to watch every time he had one of those shots in there, bringing it low with a different trajectory. Um, was he your swing coach growing up, and is he your swing coach now? Yeah, he's always been my guy. Uh, him and Wesley, or him, or myself and Wesley, always kind of you know went to Dad for, for advice. Wesley's a little more rogue and kind of would take what Dad said and kind of make it his own. And uh, his ideas you know, stemmed from Mike Bender. Um, and so Dad kind of passed that on to us, and Wesley would kind of do what do with it what he wished, and me, I was more you know listen to everything Dad said. And now I'd say still, I mean, it's I kind of know what Dad Dad's going to say. It's pretty fine tuned at this point. Is you know when I get off, it's going to be this. But I'd say him and Ben Pelicani, which is another Bender guy based in Nashville, it's kind of I'd say I send more stuff to him. I'd say fifty fifty him and Dad. Um, Ben's a little more new age kind of version of Mike Bender, I guess, a little younger, um, not quite as, I guess, quote-unquote, Bender-esque is what people would think of, I guess, think of Bender. Um, so, yeah, so Ben and my dad, what I would say, are my, you know, swing coaches, if you will. Yeah. As far as uh, your YouTube channel right now, we talked about Graham a little bit, and you guys currently have this 2v2 series going on. Is it called The Chomp? Is that right? Yeah, I think that's what the you know team choppers against the world, and so I think either I think Skyler Grant's uh, video guy or Grant were like, "This is called the chomp," and we kind of, or Grant was like, "All right, let's." I was like, "Okay, yeah." So I guess that's kind of the unofficial title. I can't remember who came up with it, but yeah, team choppers against the world, um, pretty fun. Like I think it's a great concept, but so, like the people we want to play, we have to play good golf to win, and uh, we have right. some good matches lined up and. So it's going to test us. You know, I'm not the best scramble player. And so I like if we're going to play well, like Grant always plays pretty well. Like he's played pretty solid both matches. It's just me. I feel like I haven't quite been as dialed as I need to go, need to be to like really compete. Um, but it's been a lot of fun, like getting me and Grant together, but also like going up against some like high level golfers. Yeah. So for those watching um, the 2v2 series so far, there's been two matches posted on the Brian Bros YouTube channel. The first, correct me if I'm wrong, was against Akshay and Wesley, right? Mm -hmm. That was an awesome match, um, super high-level competition, obviously. And then the most recent video, and this video will come out in about a week or so, so the most recent video was against Josh Kelly and Fat Perez. Talk to us about playing those guys who don't have the same type of professional pedigree but can both play. Yeah, that was uh, – so Fat Perez on his home course is like – he's just a solid player. He's gonna hit a lot of fairways. Josh is very up and down, but he's again, he's a he's a scratch golfer. He can shoot on a par if he plays well. Like he shot what he shot, three or four under on the back nine of a different course we played that same trip and just smoked me. So like he's got game. But them two together off the rip, like, you know, what do you think special, but like one would hit a good shot, the other would be kind of whatever, but they would just always hand and make birdies. And they shot like six under on the front nine. Um, you know, hitting wedges close and just making putts. But then the confidence kind of just was like there the whole time. And so they fed off one another. So I'd say, you know, game wise, I think we're me and Grant are the better golfers, but them two together um, right. at Fats home golf course, like the, they were vibing and it was fun to watch because yes, I wanted to win. I was annoyed, but like seeing them play well, it was like, this is fun. Um, Cause I've never played with uh, FP. And he's got a lot of, I mean, he's really good. Uh, doesn't hit that far, but like straight, his wedges are pretty solid. Um, and we get to putter roll, like you guys, people who watch the videos, I mean, he made everything. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it was, they might not be as talented or might not quite be at my level, but like they can hang. That just shows you how like close everyone in the YouTube golf space is. 
um, that anyone can hang with anyone any given day. And, um, but yeah, it was, it was a blast. He really, he, he literally is a national treasure and I don't, I would take, I would take an L every day of the week if it meant I got to play with him uh, more often because he's, he's that fun uh, to play golf with. Yeah, that's cool that you guys went up to Virginia, played at his home course, and just from a viewer's perspective, had you and Grant just smoked them, I don't think it would have been as entertaining, especially coming down the last few holes. So seeing you guys get down, have to chase them, it all come down to that last hole, it was just like really good content. So I really enjoyed that video. Yeah, the uh, the so the thought... It's always fascinating what people like gravitate towards and like dislike, like whatever. Like the people just hated the fact, rip me in the comments for like leaving Josh out of the thumbnail. And it was like one of those things. There's more fit, more to the thumbnail, you know, titling in the YouTube world than just like that people think. And so like, yeah, it was not a, it was not a dig at Josh and me and Josh. Like Josh is one of my closest friends. Out like I've known him for seven eight years now, and he's one of my best buds. And it's always texting like, man, this is a, uh, we got thumbnail gate going on right now. People just like, can't believe you would disrespect Josh, leaving him out of thumbnail. Um, but then on the other side of that is Josh made a, probably one of the best comments that's been made to me in a while is, you know, I had a, I think, yeah, it was right before I had that put on the last hole, I had a 10 footer and uh, he was like, Hey, just treat this like, you know, your PJ tour qualifier, you know, that I missed by one. And it was like the ultimate dig that like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I, he was like, "Ooh, too soon." It, just the whole thing was like, I, I was laughing. I was like, that was, "That was a good one, Josh." But people in the yeah. comments were like, "Rick and Josh." He was like, "Man, I can't, wow!" Like, why would you say that? And and I'm like, "Dude, that was that's one of the best digs that I've heard in a long time." <laughs> and so it's it's funny <laughs> to see like how every single person in the, like the views of YouTube video are different. No, no two people see the same way for the most part. And so um, I thought it was an amazing comment that people. Like, like, ah, it's, you know, you can't, who, who gives you the right, Josh, to say that? I don't know. So it was, but anyway, all from every angle, those, that video was just an amazing yeah. time and yeah, uh, it came out well. I really liked the bouncing back and forth of the cart cams between you and Grant and then Josh and FP, especially when you're kind of talking about each other and what you need to do. Um, that was just, I, I hope we get a rematch of that in some fashion, even if it's not a 2v2. That was just really, really good dynamic. Um, enjoyed that. Can we talk a little bit about you and Wesley and just sort of the dynamic that you guys have as brothers kind of playing off of each other? Um, Wesley's humor and is a little bit more drier. And so he's kind of out there kind of throwing jabs a little bit. And you just take a lot of it. You take a lot of those punches. And it's really entertaining to see you go back and forth. Is it natural for you guys now to be playing in front of the camera? Was it always natural? And how did you guys maybe get started with that? Yeah, I mean, that's just who I mean, it's honestly probably a little tamer version on camera than would it like. No, I think we're nicer now than we used to, but like in high school and college, it was awful. I mean, it was, I would, I would throw a little more back at him than, than I do now, but it was legitimately, that's how, like what you're, we, everyone's seeing now is like how it was. Just, we were at each other's throats at all times. Now we loved each other and we were encouraging, but like, that's just how our relationship is. Like it was never one where we like, Oh, I love you so much, Wesley. I'm so proud of you. It was always like, man, you stink. Like you're the worst. Like good luck here. Uh, good luck trying to beat me, um, kind yeah. of thing. And so it's fun, and I think it plays well on camera now. Is like he's the bad guy, and he's like the one that's going to be throwing out spears, run a little softer, more, a little quieter, I guess. And it's just that, and it's always personalities have always just gone really good together. And then you know, you, we got in front of the camera what eight, nine, eight years ago, whatever it was, when we started this thing, and people were like, wow, this. Y'all's relationship is amazing. It's just like every other brother, you know, dynamic out there. And so it's not us trying to be a certain way. It's just the, the, the way we're built just naturally, I guess, uh, comes off well on camera and people can see that. Um, to the end of the day, he, he is one of my biggest fans and um, he wants to see me succeed, but he's just the trash talker. And, yeah, um, yeah. and it's fun to, I mean, I enjoy it because – Hey, it makes me better golfer. Like I don't want to lose to him, and I want to have those moments where I can stick it back to him. And I think you'll see in so, some of the upcoming videos. There's some good. Yeah, you know, I'm starting to play a little better golf. I can start to like give it back to him a little more. And so it's fun now that people are kind of going to see me, maybe stir the pot a little more, like be the aggressor. Um, but right. yeah, it's a. Uh, I love it though. I, I want him. He. I want him to keep being the villain or being right. the trash talker, and I'll just be the nice guy and. Uh, 
Yeah. I thought it was funny when uh, Wesley was making Instagram stories during the Wyndham qualifier, and he was showing you coming up the last hole, and it was just sort of one of those things where it's like, he wants you to maybe not do great so he can get into the tournament, but he also wants you to do well and get in the tournament. And he had to kind of clarify in a follow-up story, like, hey, I love George, I want him to do well, but like, now's not the time, because if he makes a birdie here, then that means another guy in the playoff, harder for me to get through. Um, what was it like competing against him directly for a spot on in that PGA Tour event? Yeah, that was wild. I mean, you, know, you, can't, you really can't make that up, because like, now we've competed in tournaments our whole life, so it's nothing new, but like, to do it at this stage, with, while filming it and being like, you know, we're, I'm there to tell a story and, or I'm there to have my story told. I'm not really doing a whole lot of them just playing someone else's filming, but the fact that it lined up and me and Wesley made it into a playoff for a PJ tour event. And then on top of that, we're filming the whole thing, doc, documenting the whole thing. It's, it's, I mean, it's wild. You can't, I mean, you really can't make it up. And then for him to do what he did in the playoff, making birdie hit it that close to advance, um, it really was really cool to see and witness. Um, how, now, do I wish I would have gotten in? Absolutely. But just to get somewhere at my level where I'm not playing every day competitively to make it to myself just in position is a big win. And it gave me a lot of confidence and will give me a lot of confidence. So, yeah, so, I mean, it really was amazing to duke it out against him 1v1, like, with everything on the line. And so... Yeah, it was it was awesome. I heard you say at the end of that video, I think you had said like maybe had I gotten in, I would have shot like 77, 72. It would have been kind of nervous in the actual event. And in a video that I posted on my channel, I was saying I truly believe like had you gotten through that playoff, your momentum and you just had nothing to lose. So I think you would have gone on and made the cut um, because you're playing with house money getting into that through the Monday qualifier and when you're playing with confidence, there's like nothing more dangerous. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I mean, I really do think it would have been interesting to see because my game is built for that kind of golf course. I hit, I drive it really well. The only thing that would have probably is if I do get off with my iron game, seeing how the greens were and how like crazy fast and firm and just how diabolical some of those pin placements were, I could have got stuck. My chipping is, you know, is my weakest thing right now. I don't practice a whole lot. And so there could have been some times where like, I just make some big numbers, but no, it would have been, I, w I, I wouldn't have shot 77, but it would have been interesting to see how I handle the nerves. Cause I, my game was as good as it's been. And if yeah. I would have had that same mentality in the qualifiers, I would in the tournament, I could have definitely contended for making the cut. I don't know how well I would have played, but like it, it would have, I think probably surprised me. Yeah. Where did the whole year of the beast come from? How'd that start? <laughs> I don't even know, but it's amazing. <laughs> it's like making me play better. It really is. Um, we've always, <laughs> Like, probably the last few, I don't even know how long, but we've always kind of, like, joked around and said, you know, I'm a beast, or you're a beast, Wesley, you're such a beast. It's kind of, like, got thrown in our lingo. It's not like we're saying it all the time, but, like, we would always say just something of the source of every now and then, like, hey, golly, you're, you're just a beast, man. Um, and then this year, I can't remember where, like, somehow, so I made a con, Wesley made a con, or I, I was playing well, and I was like, hey, Wesley, you know what? This makes sense, because it's just a year of the beast, man. Like, of course I'm playing well. And then, you know, you know, a week later, I'm playing around, and Wesley was like, well, you know, if I'm playing with a, a few of other buddies, and he's like, well, I mean, of course George is playing well. It's the year of the beast. And, you know, that, that goes to another, I think we're filming with Grant and Mike and those guys or someone, and Wesley, you know, brings it up again. He's like, well, yeah, he's playing well because it's the year of the beast. And so then some other people kind of started, like, kind of taking it, like, when I hit good shots or do something well, you know, I said, you're the beast. And it all started off camera. And then I was like, you know what? It's actually like deep down, there's some significance because the last few years, my confidence is always thing that lacked. Like I've, I've had the skill for a while to like, you yeah. know, compete with Wesley and hang with some better players, but I just always doubted myself and was never confident. And everyone's always said that. But this year I was like, you know what? We're going to like be over the top and be kind of annoying and like kind of have kind of project this self-confidence and like really make this you're the beast like my alter ego and like until i start believing in myself more um so what started out as a joke um i kind of bled it and put it started putting it on the internet and i put it in a video and i was like you know what guys i've i've been saying it off camera but they're the reason i'm playing so well is this year is just the year of the beast like it's this new new year new me and like that's what it is and it kind of it just stuck people like started commenting and Hey, it's you're the beast, you're the beast. And I was like, you know, it's amazing. This is awesome. This is funny. Uh, but there is some like significance where it's actually, you know, I've been 
I've, I've been playing some of the best golf I've played in a long, long time. Four tournament rounds I have this year, 70, 64, 66, and 67. There's something to be said about me getting a little bit more confident, even like when I'm playing in matches with Wesley or whatever, I'm shooting low or, you know, in the sixties, deep under par most of the time. And, and I really can truly say that like, yes, some physical or parts of my game are better, but it's just all mentally. I'm just a more confident person and believe in my game more. And it's all from a silly, like just this year, the beast that's kind of bled over and actually, you know, start, started believing it. So yeah, you're the beast. <laughs> So when you went to the Wyndham qualifier, by the end of that, were you surprised at all? Or did you have that expectation that you're going to make it through the pre-qualifier, Monday qualifier? The pre-qualifying, you never know it's a crapshoot. Those are the ones that are almost the hardest because, like, you have to finish, like, you can't get to the Monday unless you get to the pre-qualifier. So there's almost more pressure on the pre-qualifier because, you know, you want to have a chance to get into the tournament. And so, you know, I'm playing... And I just had a great practice round. And then I teed up. I'm just playing solid golf and, like, not missing shots. I'm confident. I'm like, man, this is, like, it was a very easy 400. I don't think I came – I might have came close one time making a bogey. Because I think it was bogey-free 400. And, you know, I get to the 16th or 15th hole, and I'm 4-under. And I basically played 17 and 18 knowing that I just need to play them one over par. And I kind of played super conservative, didn't even play for birdies, whatever. So I shoot 4-under. I'm like – I could have shot an eight under today, like pretty easily. So that gives me confidence going into the Monday. And then, you know, you get some, make some birdies and let's just see what happens. And you start making more birdies, more birdies. And before you know it, you're five or four or five under whatever I was. And um, it's just one of those things where I've been playing well. And I know I haven't played tournaments and people on the out that don't watch me on YouTube might not know, but like I played some good golf and I'm pretty confident. And, but the prequel definitely helps seeing that, okay, I can do this at this course in this tournament. Just don't freak out. Just have the same kind of mindset. And yeah, it's, um, it was pretty wild. Cause like on paper, I shouldn't be as confident because, you know, I'm not playing tournament golf. Like I just, I just film YouTube videos, but I have all these things I can look back on and be like, you know what? I can, I can hang with these, you know, these guys if I'm playing well. So, uh, it was, it was, I, I mean, unexpected to get as close as I did, but at the same time, I'm not surprised at how, you know, that I gave myself right. a chance, you know, coming down the stretch. For sure. So Q school for you starts in what, about three weeks? Mm -hmm. September, yeah, like okay. September 18th to 23rd. So yeah, right about three weeks. Okay, so probably about two weeks by the time this video drops. How are you feeling heading into Q school and like what what led you to decide to, that that was the right thing to, to do the rest of this year? I feel in a, I feel like the, we're trending in a place, like I'm, I'm, I'm very, uh, for the first time in a while I'll be, confident and comfortable playing more than likely in the Q school. I don't know how I'm going to play, but like, I feel like I'm in a good spot because it's not my job anymore to play professional golf. So I don't have that pressure of like, Oh, what happens if I fail? It's all, like you said, it's kind of more like house money at this point. Um, although it's not very cheap. So it's PJ tour money. The Q school is five, 5,000, 5,500 bucks to play or to sign up. So mm. super expensive. Um, but yeah, so mentally I'm just in a, I feel like I'm going to be in a really good spot mentally and physically. You know, I'm driving well, hitting swings, starting to feel, you know, pretty good. So I'm excited. Like, I really think this year, more so than the others, I have almost a better chance this year, even though I'm not playing full time, just because some things, like, you know, like I said, I'm a little more confident. I'll have, I won't be as stressed as in previous years. And physically, like, we're probably the best that I've been swinging the, swinging the club, putting since I've been a professional. So, yeah. So all that to say, I don't know. I'm hopeful. But what led me to, I just, I don't know. I haven't done Q school in like four years. And this is something that I've been kind of kicking around the last two years. I started YouTube 2020. Didn't even think about it that year. 2021, not really. But the last couple of years, people are like, oh, you should do Q school again. I'm like, well, my game's not like, it's not really that good. I mean, I know I can kind of fake some people out on YouTube. Like people can see me shooting one or two under in some matches, but it's not good enough to compete with those guys. That was last year. But this year, it's been different. It's like not been fluky. I've been shooting fluky two and three unders. It's been like solid two and three unders, four unders, five unders, playing tournaments, play well. And it's like, man, let's just, you don't, I don't know when I'm going to have another shot where I'm going to act when I, well, my game will be this good and I'll have the kind of itch to do it. So I was like, screw it. Let's just send it and see what happens. Um, then I signed up and like, crap, what have I done? Because it's very stressful. Like I know, I might not put on, people might not be able to see it through the, 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 the camera, but it's very nerve wracking and stressful. And it's a lot of 
pressure uh, teeing up in these kind of tournaments and very uncomfortable, but it's something that like, I don't know if I'm going to have this opportunity again. And yeah, so I went for it. We got three weeks, two weeks to get the game right. And that'll be the first stage and, you know, play some good golf and keep it going. Are you planning on documenting it? Are you able to bring the camera along with you? Oh yeah. That's, that's part of the, uh, the deal. Like I want to, uh, this, these are going to be the one I, I feel like these videos are going to be more, not serious, but like I want to do make this like a big documentary style, just telling this whole journey instead of just my normal kind of vlog or whatever, because this is a very interesting one to tell that not a lot of people know about the ins and outs of Q school. And, you know, if I get through and play good golf, it could be something that's really cool to, to have, you know, being documented. How do you balance YouTube and professional golf at the same time? Um, you don't, it's just pure. I mean, it, it really is like, I'm lucky because this is what I've done my whole life. I played professional golf from, or I played high level competitive golf from age, you know, 10, 11, all the way till 30 years old. And so my default is always going to be like that can kind of competitive mindset, but it's re it really is. If you want to do YouTube, if you want to do professional golf, you can't do what I'm doing. Like my main focus is filming YouTube videos, not like being good at golf, but I've done a good job of balancing and working on things given, you know, the, the, in the information I have from my dad and other people and how to practice what I need to do to like use the best of my time um, and really maximize, you know, my practice sessions um, but it really, it's, it's difficult, but it's also something that is me as a golfer. I've always struggled with being too, um, put too much pressure on myself and trying too hard. And so this YouTube has actually allowed me to, to not, or take some of that pressure off where I'm not trying as hard. I'm not really worried about tournament golf because it's not my main job, my main focus. So it's like when I go out and play in these tournaments, I'm a little less, I'm not, don't have as much pressure on me as I used to. And, you know, given like I said, uh, make YouTube videos and create content for a living, not depend on hitting, shooting a low score possible. So there's an element that a lot of these guys that are playing, that competing, that don't have to, or that I, that, it, that it equals out might, that physically they might be better, but mentally I'm a little in a better spot because I I'm out there and just this is almost something like I don't know. It's hard to it's hard to explain, but it's it's something that's super nice and um, it's put me in a spot like playing like you said like these terms I played in the last two years. I've never really felt like i do mentally um ever competing so three calls really long, long ramble kind of forgot where i was going mid mid uh mid thing but yeah it's it's harder than people think but giving my person my like game like what i need to i don't know how to describe it how my game works like youtube has taken an edge off and it's allowed me to play better golf even if i'm not putting as much work in as you know i used to for sure i gotta ask you about two things one is selena and then two is brian bros invitational so can you walk us through both of those uh big news items yeah selena golf club is going to be i mean it's gonna be the golf course of definitely the midlands like the columbia there's i feel like it's gonna be the best course in columbia for sure um best course in the state i'm not sure i mean there's we have a lot of ones that we have to go up against over time but i'm telling you i've been out there the progress i mean where it came from, Indian or Indian River was the pr the previous course was used to be a good course. Lost money, went way downhill, and honestly was really bad. And we're resurrecting it and redoing it. And from what it was at its lowest, you know, just probably two years ago, a year ago, to where it is now and where it's going to be is going to be mind blowing. I was out there a few days ago, and the progress that's been made. You know, it's a total renovation from green to fairway. I mean, everything, everything's getting ripped up and making new. And it's like, I was, there was a group, what some of the greens already after only being sprigged for like eight, seven weeks, six weeks are better than most courses I've put it on in the area. And wow. we're talking, these greens are six and seven weeks old. They're rolling smooth. Like they look good. And it's like, holy cow. And so it's going to, it's going to turn a lot of heads. People are going to go out there and like, this is not the same course. Um, this should not be this good of a course should not be right here. Um, so I think it's going to surprise some people. Um, and it's just gonna be a cool new club, unique and something that Millens doesn't have. And, um, I think, well, I think people from a national scale, not national standpoint are going to be excited about it and wanting to be become, you know, part of Selena because, you know, me and Wesley have something cool going. There's gonna be a lot of young players and the course is going to be absolutely amazing in tour level conditions. 
So what's the plan for using that course? Are you going to film there a ton or like what's the, the business maybe plan for using it? Oh yeah. I mean, well, that's, it'll be, I mean, we'll film a lot of our videos there and host hopefully, you know, corn fairy event one day, high level stadium, wow. uh, stadium events. Like it's like some, we want to host some high level tournaments at this course. And we think given the condition of it, the, the level of, I mean, it's gonna be a pretty, pretty tough golf course, I feel. And so, yeah, hosting tournaments, but just a, your normal private golf course, the guy that's running the whole show, like he's got a good plan for it. And I really think, you know, from, from that standpoint, from a local standpoint, like it's going to be an awesome club to be a part of, you know, you'll have, you know, good, good restaurant, um, good membership and hopefully film. I mean, we'll film a decent amount out there. We'll probably host some, you know, I, I, I don't know, like YouTube golf tournaments, but like just have people that want to come out and film, host them. So it'd just be like kind of a creator hub for, you know, South Carolina where, Hey, you're looking to film. Can we, you make it happen? Absolutely. Come on, Selena. That's awesome. When is the open date? Uh, spring ish. Like I think there'll be yeah. some preview play this fall. Uh, cause I mean, it's the next probably six weeks. It'll basically, I mean, it won't be very, very good shape and like, it won't be a playable shape, but like you'll have grass everywhere and people will be able to see some of the holes. But I think next spring will be like target date for opening with it looking and like playing like a real golf course. That's awesome. Talk to us about the Brian Bros Invitational. You just hosted it. The tournament looked awesome. First version of it. So walk us through how that came to be, planning it, hosting it. Were you happy with how it went, all that? Yeah, and it was, uh, it, I mean, I've never hosted a golf tournament, never ran an event in my life, had no idea what I was doing. Uh, but I had a team, you know, uh, Wellington over, like the guy that basically rebranded Brian Bros and helped do the, the creative side of what we kind of have now. Him, along with my wife, just kind of, you know, he, he, they did all the graphics. My wife did all the planning for the, the dinners and the food. I got the golf course and got people there. But it was really just, you know, I've seen all these golf tournaments over the years, like people hosting their own tournaments and whatever. I kind of want to do something for the people that enjoy our videos. And, and honestly, for the people like Discord, the, the more kind of everyday crazy people that are part of this community. Um, I want to do it for them to where we could get together and meet and hang out, play a tournament. But then that's, that's when they, they were like spurring me on to like, Hey, you should do a tournament. We'd definitely come and play. I was like, well, let's just, let's just go for it. And then when I opened, like we actually started it, I was like, man, what like did I actually get into? Cause I had no idea. Um, but it turned out, you know, at 85 people there, it went as smoothly as it, I could have imagined, but it was really, it was awesome because it was not like some sponsor activated tournament. You know, be sponsored on this whole whole event, sponsored by this. Come try this product. But it was just some uh, an event where I could get people who watch the channel, support the channel, where we could all hang out, meet, but also play some golf and have a tournament um, going along where they can compete and try to win. But it was more about 80, 85 players playing golf together, meeting, and just getting to know one another more so than it being a cool Cam's Choice tournament that you can get some swag at. But yeah, no, it went, it went amazing. I'm excited for next year's. We'll start planning it here soon, probably. Or soon. It, way sooner than three months out than I did this one. But it was it really was cool. It was one of those, like, I wouldn't say bucket list days, but it was one of those, like, really awesome days that I didn't, that I was, that I'll be appreciative and grateful for for a long time because, like, people traveling from all the country just to come play in a golf tournament that, that we put on was really special. And, like, it was you know, we're, we're still really can't uh, describe how what it means. And, you know, again, on the outside, okay, 75 people playing a tournament, who cares? But to me, it was like one of those awesome events that I was super proud and everyone had fun and pumps me up for next year's that, you know, we can make it better and uh, maybe bigger. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, it was really cool. How often do you hear from viewers or meet them in person? It, does it happen at some of the uh, professional events that you go to and then at your own tournament? Was it interesting to talk to people that watch the channel and actually meet people and hear feedback from them? Yeah, it's, I mean, golf, like I tell people, golf community, the golf world is very small. Uh, golf is a very small sport in general. And so the golf community is, is naturally a very small, small thing in general. You know, you, you go to a golf course, more than likely people at that golf course watch YouTube videos of some sort. So, um, yeah, so I, I run into quite a few of them, especially at Aiken and, you know, most places we go. Hey, you know, love videos, love channel. And it's, it's cool because again, I love talking to people and, and 
you know, very appreciative of every single person that watched our video. Cause I, I mean, I'm not doing this unless people are watching the videos. So like, it's really cool, humbling to meet people here that are supporting us. But then just to meet, this one was different because this one, people had to actively, you know, pay the end of the tournament, tra uh, travel to Aiken and play. And so it was cool to just meet them and like hear their stories, see where they're from and just hang out with them. Uh, because you know, it's what I'm trying, what I've always wanted to do at Brian Rose and Wesley's the same way is like, I want to build what we're doing and make like a golf community around us. I don't want people, fans or people just watching our videos. Like I want everyone to be a part of this golf community that Brian Rose is the center of it because you know, that they're all watching for our videos, but you know, that people in the comment section can know each other, can become friends, can like make this like a positive golf community rather than just some big account that gets views and the people really don't matter. Um, and so and it was cool because it felt like that at this tournament, like people, it felt like a family gathering instead of like yeah. a fan meetup, if that makes sense. And so that's what I like. I want that to be the case. And it was cool to see that a very small, like sample size of that, but to see it in person was, was pretty cool. For sure. Speaking of bringing the YouTube space together, some of the best performing golf videos in the last year have been these YouTube golf championships. So the first one, you weren't able to make it. You and Wesley Grant hosted it. And then the second one was at Purcell. You won. Congratulations. Getting the jacket. <laughs> uh, that, that's, yeah, that's what uh, that's what kicked us off. That's what maybe uh, was a springboard uh, to success. Shut up, Mills. Uh, wife just got here. Uh, but yeah, those have been those have been fun. Like, you know, it turns the YouTube com or us YouTube golfers into like competing against each other and makes like a tournament, but it's still like a fun video, but there's still like this competitive edge because all, all of us want to win. Yeah. Those things have been amazing. Any plans to host one on your channel? Oh yeah. To that'll be that uh, serious. So th that'll hopefully in the, in the coming month, months, because I think we're going to do one. Uh, the bus Jack boys will have one. Whoever else, I don't know how many there's left, but yeah, I had strep throat at Grant's. So I was like the day before, I was like, man, I can't, I can't come, which was very sad because it looked like it was a heck of a time. But yeah, that's, it's really, it, it's, you know, anytime you can collaborate, you're just going to make better content. You're going to have eyeballs from each, every, each of the people's platforms, but the content's going to be better because like you don't use, I mean, it's not, it's a, it's, it's a rarity to get everyone together in the same place filming so people can just to see all our personalities mesh and you know the wesley and the grants match up and you know wesley and bobby hadn't been together yet but wesley and bobby fairways together will be electric so the dynamics that people don't ever get to see get to see in this one video um so that's i mean i feel like that's why they do really well but then the golf turns out being very competitive uh so yeah hopefully i don't know when ours will be next year if, if you know if it keeps going we'll definitely have to host it at our course but it won't be ready for you know, this year's rendition of it, but yeah, it's in the works for hopefully part three of this YouTube championship or whatever uh, will be going down on our channel. Speaking of Bobby Fairways, it gave me a flashback. I think one of my favorite all-time moments in YouTube golf is watching you ride with Bobby. Was it the T-Box Classic? Was that what it was for? So you're riding with Bobby Fairways. Bobby orders like a triple transfusion, and the look on your face was just sheer panic. <laughs> Best way to describe it. It was. I was panicking. I didn't know what to do because I, I don't drink much. And I'm definitely not going to drink on camera. And <laughs> and he's over here like, and we're trying to win. Like we were right in the thick of things. We're like, he's playing his butt off and I'm playing pretty good. And then I don't remember. I think it was like 11th, 12th hole. Out comes like eight tra or four transfusions with double shots. I'm like, Bobby, like we're trying to win this thing here. He's like, I know. I need it. <laughs> I was like, and so that was kind of the running joke is, you know, I don't, I don't, I can't have this. I need to perform. And like, he kept trying to get me to, hey, just, come on, man, just take a sip. And then, you know, I guess blast on the internet where people, hey, well, who's this guy? This, who's Mr. <laughs> Fun that doesn't want to have drinks on the golf course? Loosen up. I'm like, no, guys, I'm trying to win a tournament here. But no, it was, uh, it's kind of our running joke too. But one day, next, probably the next time, if we do, I will, in his honor, the transfusion or pineapple, uh, Tequila pineapple, I will have a sip in, in Bobby's honor. Not kind of the whole thing, but we'll, we will have a toast and have a sip together. I can promise you that. I love that. We're looking forward to that moment. Uh, the comment section just loved you two together. So we need more Bob Does Sports, Bobby Fairways, and George. Uh, last question here for you. So I did a YouTube ranking list, put you at number one, of course. Took Wesley off the list with just his PGA 
status and all that. But put you at number one and put Brad Dahlke at number two. I just talked to Brad and asked him the same question, so I just wanted to throw it to you. How do you think you'd fare against Brad Dahlke if you guys played a match? Uh, it depends on where it would be. Um, if I'm not having yeah. to hold a camera. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> he's, a, he's a stud of a player. Um, but I'd say right now I'd, my form has to be – up there being the, the best in YouTube golf world that, that, yeah. that just film videos. Um, you know, obviously Wesley, PJ tour player, he counts, but he doesn't really count. He counts, he counts more than Bryson. Bryson's he makes YouTube videos, but he's an actual player. Wesley is not a full tour player, but he's, he's a, he doesn't count. Um, but yeah, I mean, Brad and Luke Kwan, those guys are really, really solid, but they, they haven't, you know, they're definitely doing more YouTube now. Brad, I think Brad might still be playing tournaments. I'm not sure. But I would, I would it just would be tough knowing how my game is right now and how, yeah. you know, consistent. Like, it's just really solid. But again, Brad's the same way. So any any day, you know, you could be off and e- either of them you could, you know, replace. Who else would be up there? Yeah, Luke, Brad, myself. Ben Haddon, I guess, is getting to the YouTube world a little bit. He's pretty solid. But yeah, I have, I have been up there right now with my game. Like, I'm pretty confident, but also it's, it's solid. But again, like you said, those are all fair rankings. Brad's a heck of a player, and he can, I'm sure as heck, he can beat me just as easy as I can beat him. So, um, and I, from what it looks like, Luke is the same with Luke as well. Yeah, for sure. A lot of good talent there. I wanted to leave the viewers here with just a visual. In the last one of the last videos on your channel, you played Wesley in an 18-hole match. Stroke play was phenomenal. I think by the time this video is dropping, most people have seen this. Uh, if you haven't, spoiler alert coming. Uh, George took the W there over Wesley, shooting 69 to Wesley's 70. I was cracking up when you had two putts to win on the last hole, and Wesley just bolts to the cart. He just doesn't want to be seen losing to you. And I was like, classic Wesley, not giving George credit, not giving you your laurels. <laughs> I know, I love it. That's, the best. That's what I, I do. And, like, I, I know people hate, like, and, you know, hate, oh, you'd be better sport. But I, lo- it's, I love that because I knew he was going to be like that. Now, again, that was some of it for camera because he's a, that's what he does. He is, he likes to show off and be exaggerate and whatever. But no, part of that's, he just, he, he can't take losing to me because he's like, I'm just a YouTuber. Like, you don't even, you don't even practice, you don't play golf anymore. And I, I, you beat me. Uh, but yeah, that was, that was when it came, like, when I knew I'd won, I'm like, yes. I don't care that we didn't play our best, but like, I took the win and he's going to hate it and it's going to be amazing. <laughs> Yeah, he was saying that he was working on his swing just secretly to the camera. You know, don't tell George. This is just exhibition. I loved it. I thought that was great. I did too. Any last words here before I let you go? No, I think we covered everything. I appreciate you having me on. Uh, it's been fun. This YouTube golf, it's, it's been fun this year being more not focused on competitive golf, but kind of steering it back to a lot of comp- competition and me getting back in a tournament game. And, and that, honestly, people in the comments and everyone, kind of spurred me on to take these leaps of faith to like heck do Q school or sign up for these tournaments uh because again without the i mean i would probably make the decision on my own but it's made a lot easier with knowing that everyone is like in full support and comments hey man you got this be confident like you absolutely should do it it's like i mean they're not going to make my decision for me but like it's making easier reading those comments and having people actively support me because again it's very scary putting your golf on the internet for everyone to see in tournaments and and so it's been cool to have the sport of everyone and getting this year a lot of tournament golf in the mix and kind of bringing out my competitive spirit. So, uh, yeah, I don't think I got anything else. I uh, appreciate you having me on. It's been fun to chat and tell a story a little bit. Thanks for your time, George. We wish you the best in Q School. Can't wait to follow along. Keep pumping out these awesome videos. Heck yeah. Well, appreciate you having me. All right. See you later. See ya. Hope you enjoyed that conversation with George Bryan. I had a great time picking George's brain. I still don't know how he balances YouTube and professional golf, but there's a lot to look forward to on the Bryan Bros channel. I'm gonna link their channel down in the description. I'm just having a blast with the content lately. So if you're enjoying this channel, I really appreciate you. You could take a second and give the thumbs up button a little bit of a boost, turn that red subscribe button gray, 
it will continue allowing me to make even better content for you, continue to keep you up to date with everything in the YouTube golf space. There's a lot to look forward to with these YouTube golf championships that we chatted about with George, with George and Wesley opening up the Selena Golf Club next year. One of my dreams would be to go and visit that course next year and just provide you a tour behind the scenes look and maybe even play that golf club next year. So a lot to look forward to. It's all made possible because of you right now watching this video. So thank you so much. I hope you have a great day. I hope you enjoyed that conversation with George, Brian, and we'll see you in the next video.